Hello, Giants fans, and welcome to a new edition of the Valentine's Views podcast here on Big Blue View Radio, part of your SB Nation family of podcasts. I'm your host, Ed Valentine of Big Blue View. Please remember to uh, like, share, and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts across the Big Blue View Radio Network. All right, we are really pretty much through what you would call the training camp phase of the the preseason for the Giants. We're into a day away from their first preseason game, and as crazy as it seems, they may still call it training camp, but it's really not training camp anymore. It's 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 pretty much of a of a get ready for games kind of schedule for for the Giants and for most NFL teams at this point. So as we get closer and closer to the NFL season, here to uh, to help us discuss what we've seen, what we still need to see from your 2023 Giants is Patricia Traina, Locked On Giants, Giants Country. If you're if you're watching on YouTube, just read the wall behind Patty, and 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 that that that's all you need. That's all you need to know over all the all the things Patty's got going on. Patty, you you've you've been you've been busy. You haven't been here for a long time. What do you mean I haven't been here for a long time? I've been on your show before. I know, but it's but it's been a while. Seems like it's well, been a you got to invite me more, I guess. Ah, blame it, blame, blame it on me, of course. Just, hey, you, you know, know me. I'm not, I'm not a gate crasher. I, co- I go where I'm invited. I, I should know better than argue with you. I mean, I haven't. <laughs> shoot, I haven't. I haven't. You haven't won one yet, have you? I don't win arguments with you. I don't win arguments with my wife. And but you know, this, this is our Thursday show, and this is why I've managed to stay married for 38 years. Why today is my 38th wedding anniversary. Oh. So, so happy anniversary happy to anniversary. me. Happy anniversary. And and look at how I'm spending it. Oh, now <laughs> I feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Congratulations, you finally made me feel guilty about something. Wow, that's what it took. <laughs> huh? it, everybody marked the date and the time. Ed Valentine made me feel guilty about something. Wow. <laughs> Wow, I couldn't. I, 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 in the media room the other day, I, I couldn't get you. I couldn't get you to admit that I was right about something, though. Could I? Could I? Oh, hell, if he's over before I do that. <laughs> <laughs> of course it will. All right, Patty. Enough of uh, uh, enough silliness here. Let's talk a little New York Giants football. And neither one of us was in Allen Park, Michigan, for the joint practices the last couple of days. But I know that. You, just like I was, were glued to the reports that came out from a lot of the guys that were there, Giants media that was there, Detroit media that was on hand as well. And I saw on your website in your day, I think it was your your day two practice report, a kind of an interesting takeaway from you uh, just about the two days so I just I want to let, I want you to uh, to talk about you know how you saw just the second practice reportedly being a lot better for the Giants than the first practice was. All right. Well, here's the bottom line. I mean, who out there has not had a bad day at the office? I know I have. Have you, Ed? Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. Most so, days. Most days I have to go to an office or bank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. The Giants did, threw 10 practices before they left for Allen Park. They were looking pretty encouraging. We were sitting there marveling over the deep ball. We were sitting there, you know, oh, the run defense is better. Daniel Jones looks good. And now all of a sudden they go out and they face the Lions in the first of two practices and they lay a stinker, you know, for, by all accounts, a stinker. And everybody's like, oh, here we go. The Giants, you know, this, these are the real Giants. Long year ahead, et cetera, et cetera. Folks, you need to take a step back and take a deep breath here. Everybody has a bad day. It's when you have multiple bad days that you worry. And listen, you're not going to get any better if you don't learn from mistakes. And in order to learn from mistakes, you have to make mistakes. And you ask Brian Dable, you ask any coach of any team, and they will tell you that even though a practice might look perfect to the, you know, quote unquote, untrained eye, they see little things that need to be corrected. 
And that's constant. Now, it just so happens in the first practice that there were more glaring things. You know, Daniel Jones wasn't hitting open receivers. The defense couldn't get home past that uh, that Lions offensive line. So there were teaching points. And if you listen to Brian Dable's presser today, being Wednesday, um, he, he said, look, it was productive. And it was productive. The reason why it was productive is because they came away with a lot more teaching points. And look, if you're going to make mistakes and have bad days at the office, now's the time to do it. You don't want to no have them when you're getting ready for the Cowboys or the Eagles or insert team ne- name here during the regular season or postseason. Get them out of the way now, fix them, and move forward. No harm having you know having an off day you know, early in August. I mean, exactly. You know, it's it's not the end of the world that Daniel Jones missed a couple of throws. It's you know he he admitted after the practice he said those are throws I've been hitting those are throws I know I can hit. He missed a couple of them. Everybody's going to do that every so often. What I found interesting is couple things happened on Wednesday we heard reports that that Darren Waller was really vocal in getting his teammates to to really get after it on on Wednesday on the offensive side of the ball interesting that he's you know willingly stepping up into somewhat of a leadership role and being vocal like that and the other thing is One of the things about the Giants a year ago, one of the reasons they made the playoffs, one of the reasons they got to nine wins and won a playoff game is that they were resilient. You know, they they had a rough stretch in the middle of the year. They had a lot of games where they had to come from behind. They had to win games in the fourth quarter. And to me, just the fact that they bounced back on Wednesday, they bounced back, they played better. They didn't just say, ah, the heck with it. You know, we're here in Detroit and we're just hanging out until Friday night at when we play the game. They came out and they had a much better performance by all accounts on both sides of the ball. They created some turnovers on defense. They hit some plays on offense. It just showed resilience. It showed that that resilience is still there. It's still part of their DNA. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what does Dable always say when when people ask him, What kind of football team do you want? What does he always say? Smart, tough, dependable. All right? If you're going to be tough, you've got to be resilient, which means, look, as much as we all would love to have, you know, smooth days every day, you're going to have bumps along the way, something unexpected, you know, something that goes wrong. Maybe you make a mistake, you know? How do you bounce back from that? And, you know, it's interesting. I, I... I kind of wish I could have gotten a question into Dable these last couple of days or specifically even this morning because the question I would have for him, and don't you steal this, by the way, because I might ask him when we next get him on a call, (laughs) is can resiliency be learned or is it something that has to be taught? And I think it's a valid question because there are some teams that just fall apart at the seams when everything goes wrong. I mean, we've seen some giant teams just go down the tubes when things have gone wrong, you know, you go back to the second year of Ben McAdoo's era, for example, that team just fell apart. And then we've seen teams that when things have gone wrong, they've, they've, you know, banded together and, and moved forward. And, you know, we can point to the 2007 Super Bowl team. We can point to the team last year. So I'm curious if, you know, to know if Dable thinks resiliency can be taught or is that just something that develops organically? Yeah, that's that's an interesting thing to debate, Patty. I mean, my my personal feeling is that resiliency comes when you believe in your coaching staff, when you know that your coaching staff believes in the players and when the players have some belief in each other, when you have teams that are fractured, when you have teams that don't that don't believe in their in their coaching staff when you when you have locker rooms that are splintered you don't have resiliency because you don't have commitment so exactly i th- you know so but it but it would be interesting 
to, to hear how uh, how Brian Dable w- would answer that question. We'll see if I can get it in before you do. Uh, uh, you can't steal. Listen, <laughs> I'm on record to say that it's my question. So. Oh, <laughs> all right. I'll, 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 I'll give you that one, Patty. I'll give now you that's that That's to one. say, you know, if anybody else is watching this podcast that might be on that call might steal it. But, but no, that, it, I think it's all a right. valid question. Giants Media, you're all warned. Do <laughs> not incur the wrath. <laughs> Of an angry Pat trainer. <laughs> you ought to know, right? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I know. All right, Patty, let's move on to another topic. We're, you know, we're, we're halfway through. We're into preseason mode at this point. We've learned a lot about the Giants. We've learned a lot about some of the rookies. I think we've, we've seen some of the position battles answered but not everything. There are still questions about this team. There are still positions to be won and lost for you. Give me, give me the top questions that you have. Let's start on the offensive side of the ball. Top questions that you still have, you know, pretty much halfway through the the giants preseason. I'm going to say left guard. I still don't know what they're going to do at that left guard spot. Is it going to be Bredesen or is it going to be Azudu? Now, I know Bredesen's been working up and down the offensive line. He's worked at center. He's done some work at right guard. I think that's more or less to get him, <clears throat> excuse me, some experience at those two positions, just in case they ever have to shuffle, you know, positions around. But I really don't know what to make of the left guard spot. I don't have a feel for that. So that would probably be one of my biggest questions. I do think John Michael Schmitz will be the starting center. I do believe that Mark Lewinsky will be the right guard. Left guard right now, I I couldn't tell you because I don't have a feel for that. So offensively, that's my biggest question. On the defensive side, I have really two questions. Who's going to be inside linebacker two? Um, I think it's going to be Darian Beavers. I think he's, he's the leading contender for that. But, you know, I don't know. I don't I don't have a, you know, as good of a feel for that either. And then also um, outside of the fact that the defensive line depth's a little thin because of injuries, but I still remain concerned about the outside linebackers because who do they have behind Thibodeau and, and Ojolari? And I'm concerned about that. You know, I keep saying that. And, yes, Wink Martindale can probably manufacture a pass rush from the secondary or through other ways, but the depth there is to me is still very much a big question mark because we saw in practice, for example, you know, uh, I think it was, I I, want to say a couple of practices ago, um, the Giants ran a play to the outside and they were unable to set the edge and the the play went for a big gain. And I'm sitting there going, ah, here we go again. So those would probably be my top questions, I would say at this point. And then also on special teams, let's not forget that. Who's going to return punts, which is, I think, a big, big question that not a lot of people are talking about. Yeah, let's 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 focus on on this question for the time being. We'll talk about special teams in a minute, but I look at it and I think. I think I'm more concerned about the defense at this point, I think I have more questions about the defense and maybe that's because of injuries. Maybe that's because of depth. Maybe that's because of rookie corners that are going to be, you know, getting a lot of snaps, but I think I have more questions and concerns about the defense right now than I, than I do the offense. Would you, uh, you feel the same way? I think that's a fair statement. You know, you, you mentioned depth, you know, right now, like we said, the defensive line depth is a little banged up. Ryder Anderson is sidelined for a bit. Raheem Nunes Roches again with an injury. Um, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm sure I'm missing people here. Uh, there's another one I'm missing. DJ Maybe Davidson still DJ on Davidson's pop. DJ Davidson's on pop exactly. You know, so there's some question marks there. Uh, inside linebacker, like I said, you know, who's going to be you know number two next to Bobby Okereke? Outside linebacker for sure. You know, we just talked about that. And even in the secondary, you know, I think they're okay with safety, but 
cornerback still needs to be sorted out, especially those last couple of spots, I think, at cornerback. So I think that's definitely fair to say that defense has a few more question marks than the offense. Yeah, and let's talk special teams for just a minute. As you said, the uh, the return situation, as it seems to be annually for the Giants, is in flux. There's There's no one on the roster that you look at and you say, you know, he's the guy. Mm-hmm. He should be the guy. Jamison Crowder has has had a lot of success returning returning punts in the NFL, but it's anybody's guess as to whether Jamison Crowder can make the roster. Just the way that the way that things are going to uh, to shake out. Eric Gray, rookie who's got a very limited amount of experience doing it, is listed on the unofficial depth chart as the first as the number one punt returner, but. But I don't know how that's going to work out. And uh, they tried Jalen Hyatt in the spring. We haven't seen uh, we haven't seen him return punts at all in training camp. So I think they've moved on from that. But uh, but I don't know. It's it's a question, and and you know, I think they might go with Eric Gray and and cross their fingers. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't had a whole lot of experience, but. Right now, you know, you, you got to think and say to yourself, okay, Jamison Crowder can return punts, but you kind of get the feeling that he's sliding down the depth chart a little bit. And especially, you know, if Wandale Robinson comes back off a of pup, which Joe Shane indicated could be happening in the next week, week and a half, Crowder is probably going to slide down even further to the point where maybe he slides off the roster. Mm-hmm. So, you know, special teams can – can can influence the bottom parts of the depth charts at certain spots. And I just don't know how that's going to work out. You kind of get the impression that they would like Eric Gray to be the guy, but he's got to show that he, he can do it. And, you know, right now it's anybody's guess as to whether he can do it or not. He's, he's caught the ball cleanly. I mean, we could say that mm-hmm. we've seen that in practice, but they don't really run it full speed to where you can say, Oh yeah, he's definitely going to be the guy. But yeah, but can he catch it? Can he catch it in the wind? Can he catch it in traffic? Exactly. Can he make the right decision in, you know, inside the five yard line? Yep. Can he hold on to the ball? Can he, you know, I've, I've said this before and I've talked to a lot of guys. There's a huge difference between returning kickoffs and returning punts. Mm-hmm. Returning punts is much, much harder. Mm-hmm. beginning with the fact that the catch is much more difficult because you never know what kind of ball is coming at you. And you've got a whole bunch of guys flying at you at full speed that are really, really close to you. So yeah. it's it's a it's a really tricky job. And uh, it does it amaze you as much as it amazes me that 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 year after year after year the Giants just just don't seem to have you know that guy who we know. Okay, you know he's the return guy, and we know he's good at it. Not, not really. I mean, I think gone are the days of a Devin Hester, having a Devin Hester. Um, special teams, you know, it's interesting. Someone once told me that the special teams group gets, quote unquote, the scraps, if you will. And by that, they meant that if you look at special teams at the start of the season, once you start getting injuries on offense and defense, guys that are otherwise devoted to special teams – now come off special teams to go fill in on offense and defense, and they become valuable. So, you know, you look at last year, for example, Julian Love was a core special teamer, but, you know, because he started, they took him off of it, and they put him on defense where he he devoted most of his snaps. So it's kind of tricky to have, you know, the same core group year after year. Really the only core group you get it, with any kind of consistency, if you're lucky, is your battery, your your long snapper, your punter, and your place kicker. But yeah, it, it, it's tricky because you know, look, Eric Gray might win that job. Great. Well, who's to say in a couple of years, you know, the Giants move on from Saquon Barkley and Eric Gray becomes the number one running back? You think he's going to be returning punts if that happens? No. So that's why you you kind of see that you know revolving door, if you will. I mean, it might be when it comes to Eric Gray, it might simply be that they like the kid's skill set. And as I think we see sometimes with with rookies who don't necessarily have a role on an on offense or a full time role, it might just be 
this is a way to get the ball in his hands a few times a game. Exactly. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, look, he has the skill set, which you would think would adapt nicely to the punt return role. The, but the question is, is like you said, the spin of the ball is different. You know, the conditions are a little different. You know, you're looking up as opposed to maybe looking back if you're receiving the ball out of the backfield. So it does take some adjustment and, you know, they're, they're going to try it out. You know, that's what preseason is for, to experiment a little bit and see what you got. On the flip side, I think you and I could return kickoffs, Patty, because all we got to do is stand back there, catch, you know, wave our hand and wave our hand and catch the ball. I hate that rule so much. <laughs> you I and am me not both. A fan of that rule. You at and me all. both. Hey, I wasn't going to go here, but since you mentioned it, I was standing on the sideline the other day talking with uh, with our good friend Emery Hunt. And we were talking about this, this crazy kickoff rule. And I had a crazy idea to, to revive the kickoff. The heck with the fair catch rule. Get rid of that. Make the kickoff nine on nine. Make the kickoff nine on nine. You take the big linebackers and the big linemen and the big tight ends off the field. You spread the field out. You make it's all wide receivers and running backs and and defensive backs. And I think you, you, I think that's exciting. And I think if you take the the bigger bodies off the field, you, you you eliminate some of the the massive collisions that you get. And and I I I think it might be a way to salvage it. It'll never happen. But I'm just curious if if you think I'm nuts. No, actually, I like that idea. And I'll tell you what, I'll bet you a lot of special teams coaches around the league would take that over the current rule. Absolutely, absolutely. Because you know what's going to happen, Patty. All that all teams are going to do is all teams are going to do is kick the ball to the 10 yard line and and, and dare teams to fair catch. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much what's going to happen all year long. We're going to see yeah. fair catch after fair catch and the ball at the 25 yard line. Exactly. So, and, and you know, the, the NFL, I, I understand safety, but. Then and don't I get play it. on Thursday nights. Yeah. Don't play on Thursday nights. Don't play on art. Don't play on field turf. Mm-hmm. You know, don't make teams Go play all on, in on safety. If you're going to use that argument. Absolutely. We're guardian caps during the games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, why not? Yep. We're guardian caps. I know Patty, we could, uh, you know those those big goofy blow up bubbles that they put people in, and we've seen kids <laughs> mess with those. Put quarterbacks in those big bubbles. Bubble know? boys, like on Seinfeld. Bubble boys, there you go. On Seinfeld. Why not go all in on safety? Anyway, Patty, the New York Football Giants have a preseason game on Friday night. They do. I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, amazingly, they do. <laughs> Amazingly, they do. I'm just curious. You know, people. Let me let me just say this. I know people get all fired up about, oh, this guy had a great game, and this guy put up all these great stats, and and how come Alex Bachman didn't make the roster because he let him in receiving last year? You know, the the stats don't mean much, you know, because largely they're playing against guys, you know. Alex Bachman put up great stats against guys that aren't in the NFL now either. <laughs> so what did it matter? But yeah, I'm just curious, what are you looking for? What are you looking at? What players are you most excited to, to get a look at on Friday night? Well, first thing, I don't want to see any injuries, please. No injuries. That's number one, but you know, look, I don't think the starters are going to play much, if at all, which means we're going to probably see a lot of the backups. And, you know, you can go down the roster and, and say, okay, look at the back, you know, who's going to be the last running back on this team? Who's going to win the, t- the last tight end spot? How is the offensive line depth going to shake out? What are they going to do on defensive line where they're thin right now? You know, so you can go just go from front to back on each side of the ball and, and just, you know, there's a, there's a battle that, you know, probably is of interest for me. I think I would like to see um, obviously how the receivers start to look, you know, because that's going to be d- tough to predict. 
I think I would want to see how the offensive line depth is going to come in, into play because they, they've been cross training guys to do different positions. Um, I'd like to see the outside linebacker situation, get some clarity, the depth behind Thibodeau and, and Aziz Ojolari. Um Defensive backfield, I think the safeties are pretty much set, but cornerback, I think, is still a question mark. And then, you know, just across the board, you know, and what are they going to do with, with their quarterback? You know, we met, we haven't really talked about that a whole lot. You know, is it going to be Tommy DeVito or is, is you know, are, are they going to say, okay, you know what, we got to go in a different direction here? Yeah, it's interesting. I know that the league has the new emergency quarterback rule this year. I don't think the Giants are keeping three quarterbacks on the 53. I still don't. I, I Maybe think one on the practice squad. Oh, I think they'll keep somebody on the practice squad, but not not on the 53 on a week. You know, not somebody that'll, that'll be a week-to-week guy they'd have to carry on the roster. But but it's interesting. It's a possibility, I suppose, with the way the rules are now. Well, it depends also on injuries. You know, do you have the roster spot to to, to, to really, you know, where you can devote it? To that guy, right. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I injuries are going to play a factor into how many they keep at certain positions. I mean, they mm-hmm. always do. So, knock on wood, they haven't had you know anything major really pop up yet. Knock on wood. Shh. I know, I know. I just, Daddy. Know. I just, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, but my point is, is you know, even even yes. if if a guy has a you know something that's going to keep him out a couple of weeks. And it's not season ending. That's still going to factor into you know what they keep on, at numbers. So, you know, speaking of about injuries, let's just wrap it up with this. I know you've gotten a ton of questions about it. I've gotten a ton of questions about it, and I'm talking about the the new field turf at MetLife Stadium. And I keep getting questions: What do the players think of the new field turf at the stadium? People, they haven't been on the new field turf at the stadium yet. They do not practice in the stadium. But the new turf is also installed in the practice bubble at MetLife. The Giants did practice in there the other day. I know a lot of the players spent some time working out in there and, and you know running up and down on that, on that turf during the offseason. All of the comments that, that I've gotten from players thus far have been positive, talking about how much softer it is. You and I have walked on it, on the turf in the in the practice bubble. And it does it to me, it doesn't feel as deep and as thick as as that turf that they that they previous had, which which maybe lessens the chance of of getting your foot caught in it. I'm not, you know, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not an expert, yeah. but but have you gotten the same kind of kind of comments that I've gotten from, you know, from anyone you've had a chance to talk to. Yeah. About it. I, I mean, you know, like you said, I've walked on it as well. It is softer. And, you know, my, my litmus test is by the time I come off that field, how does my lower back feel? You know, if my lower back is stiff, then that means that that turf is too hard. I haven't had any lower back issues or stiffness. So that means it gives a little bit more, um, you look at the blades of grass, and I use that in quotes, and right. you don't see the netting like you did with the other ones. So therefore, the chances of something getting stuck probably slim to none. So it does very closely resemble real grass, but it's not, you know, it, it, it's still turf. It's still artificial turf, but it does feel a lot softer than what I remember the, you know, prior field feeling like. And maybe someday they'll have real grass in, in MetLife. Maybe. But, but who knows? I I think everybody would like that, but, but it is, you know, but it is the Northeast and it, and it's, it's not an easy thing to do anyway, Patty, um, any other quick thoughts on the giants? Uh, you know, as we get ready for the preseason opener here before we, uh, before we wrap it up. Yeah. I mean, the, the only other thing I would, you know, a friendly reminder to everybody, the score doesn't matter. The giants <laughs> could go and get blown out 40 to nothing. It really doesn't matter. What's going to matter is the one-on-one matchups and just the units themselves. You know, are you seeing progress? Because remember, a lot of the scoring is usually done by guys don't, that don't even make the roster. It's done in garbage time. So, you know, I see this every year where the Giants lose a, a preseason game and I get people 
all all upset coming to me. Oh my God, we're going to have a long season. Guys, the score doesn't matter. So just sit back, relax, watch the, you know, these young pups, you know, don't, don't sit there and go, ah, I don't want to watch preseason because then I get people, when I mention a name, they say, who's that? And I'm like, and you call yourself a big giant fan and you don't know who that is. This is your opportunity to know who these guys are. So just mm -hmm. sit back, relax, enjoy it. Don't worry about the score. The score doesn't matter until September 10th. Oh, uh, you're preaching to the choir, Patty. Preaching <laughs> to the choir. All right, Patty, appreciate the time. And Giants fans, thank you, as always, for listening. Please stay safe out there. Take care of each other, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.